Let's jump right into our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we're talking about all of us being ministers of some sort and talking about leadership and talking about what the Old Testament had to say and what the New Testament had to say uh, regarding uh, leadership. And and so let's just dive right in. Father, tonight I ask you to uh, give us ears to hear what you're saying and God give us a heart that's soft and moldable and ready to respond, God, to your word. And we'll be quick to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. So, so let's just jump in right into the Word of God. So we look at we look at Scripture in in First Peter chapter two verse nine, and he says he says this. He says, "But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a, a holy nation." his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're all part of a royal priesthood now. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, and he gave some, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be, or in Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians 4, 14, and 15 says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceit plotting, but speaking the truth in love and growing up in all things, who is the head, Christ. We all have gifts and, and talents and skills to reach people. And I believe that, that, that all of us in some shape, manner, or form have been called to be a minister of some sort. We all have a, a ministry, if you will, uh, of some sort. And so we're going to look back at the, at the Levitical priests when God started to set that priesthood up. And when the priests got dressed, the presence of God would fall. And if we would get dressed in the same spiritual manner, I believe that the presence of God would fall around us. In, in Exodus uh, 29, verse 20, it says this, And then you shall kill the ram and take some of its blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron and on the tip of the right ear of his sons and on the thumb of their right hand and on the big toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood all around the altar. Of course, we know that the blood of the ram was symbolic of the sacrifice of Jesus. And then we look at kind of a strange thing that, that God told, told them to do was to, was to take the blood and put it on the tip of the right ear. And I believe that that was symbolic that we need to have the blood applied to our ears because we should hear differently because the blood is on our ear. We should hear differently now that we have applied the blood of Jesus to our lives. And this is a reminder that we need to hear differently, learning how to hear God's voice, learning how to discern what God is saying to us. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, Jesus is saying this. This is in red letters. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give him to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Jesus says, let he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches in seven times in seven verses. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. Revelation 2, 17. Revelation 2, 29. Revelation 3, 6. Revelation 3, 13. And Revelation 3, 22. Do you think Jesus might have been trying to get something across to his people that we need to have ears to hear? Come on, somebody. 
And then he says, I want the blood to be to be put on their right thumb. In other words, as priests, as God's people in, in ministry, in, in, in following hard after the things of God, we should work differently because the blood of Jesus is on our thumbs. In other words, we need to be careful what we touch. We need to be careful what we do. We need to be careful where we put our hands. We need to be careful that we're working diligently unto the Lord because the reminder is the blood of Jesus is on our thumb. Colossians chapter 3, 23 and 24 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive a reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And then he said there in Numbers, he said, listen, I want you to put it, I want you to put the blood on their right big toe. And I believe that is that is saying to us today that we need to walk different because the blood of Jesus is on our toe. We need to be careful where we walk. We need to be careful how we walk. And we need to be careful with who we walk with. Because the blood of Jesus is on our toe. He's on our ear so we can hear. He's on our thumb so we're careful with what we touch. We're careful with how we work. We're careful with how we do things. But it's also, it's on our toe, our big right toe to remind us to be careful how we walk. We need to walk humbly right before our God. First John 1, 6 and 7 says that if we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Psalm 86 verse 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk, here it is, walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Colossians 1.10 says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So listen to this. Specifically, it was applied to the right ear, hand and foot. It isn't because God felt that they could do whatever they want with their left ear, their left hand, or their left foot. It was because the right side was considered superior with more strength and more skill because most people are right-handed. And God wanted their best to be dedicated to him. So in my notes, I put that there's only about 10 to 12 percent of the world's population is left-handed and, and he was trying to get across that we need to give him our best, our strongest, when we come to the things of God. Exodus 29, verse 21. And you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and on all of his garments. The blood in here is significant but God wanted the blood mixed with the anointing oil, the mixture sprinkled on the priest, because there was to be a combination of both the sacrifice and the spirit represented by the oil. Charles Spurgeon said it like this. He says, Yes, brethren, we need to know that double anointing, the blood of Jesus which cleanses and the oil of the Holy Spirit which perfumes. It, it perfumes us and is well to see how these two blend into one. Isn't it a terrible blunder to set the blood and the oil in opposition? They must always be together. So really, what God is talking about in these verses, the blood on the right ear, the blood on the right thumb, the blood on the right uh, toe, the, the sprinkling of the blood and of the oil on his head and on his garments, he's really talking about consecration. He's really talking about dead dedication. 
And listen, can I just tell you something? That God is after our dedication. He's after our dedication. Father, I ask you tonight that you would just minister to us about our dedication. Have we applied the blood of Jesus to our lives and to our hearts? Have we applied the blood of Jesus to our ears so we could hear what you have to say? Have we set aside our ears, so to speak? Have we consecrated or separated aside our ears so we could hear what you have to say? Have we set aside the things that we touch, the things that we do, the things that we work for because the blood of Jesus has been applied to our thumb? Have we dedicated the things that we do with our hands, made sure that we come to you with holy hands, with clean hands, with clean hearts? Have we applied the blood of Jesus to our big right toe so that we can walk in you, so we can walk worthy of our calling, so we can walk upright before our God? Have we been careful with where we walk and what we do and where we go? Oh, God, I pray that you'll help us. Lead us. Guide us. Help us to apply the blood appropriately so we can hear, so we can serve, and so we can walk with you in the right way. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. Till next time.